Okay, this STEM activity challenge is called Index Card Bridge. Basically what we've got is the students are going to be making a bridge out of index cards. They're going to have a couple of large index cards. They're going to make a bridge that spans this distance. Uh, we will end up putting something on there and then adding pennies until the bridge fails. And then each group is ultimately trying to find out how many pennies can their bridge hold. Whichever bridge holds the most, they win. So that's a brief overview of this STEM activity challenge. And what I want to do in this video is I want to talk to you about the materials you'll need to run this in your classroom. I want to talk about setting this up for the students and then actually running it. So doing the testing, what are, what are some things that I say, how do I set things out, and then finish off with the science behind this. What is the science we want the students to understand and, and learn? So let's go straight into the materials that you'll need. So for the students and the bridge that they're going to build, they're going to need note cards. <clears throat> I like to go with the, the largest ones we can get, which would be five by eights. So five by eights, and then each student or each group that's working on this, they're going to get ten of these. Eight of them for trial and error practicing things, we'll talk about a little bit later, and then two of them for building their final bridge. Okay, so the large note cards. Also, each group, I let them have some tape, so scotch tape, and uh, I usually go about one foot. So I'll pull off about one foot of scotch tape, give them some scissors, and they can use that wherever they want. If you don't give them a limit on scotch tape, they'll, they'll put a lot of that in there. So that's what we need for the students. For the teacher and the setup, what we have right here is I've got a couple of boxes that are the same size. So I wrap these in construction paper and I use this for another activity challenge, uh, the marshmallow bridge. So you might have seen that. Um, so I just have these things sitting off to the side and I use them. I've got some blue construction paper and I put these wavy lines on there like it's water and tell the students that we have a, a raging river underneath of uh, what's going to be their bridge. So for some uh, added excitement there. I have a ruler that I need to use to, to set things up. So we always go with a span of six inches. You know, if you have really young students, maybe bump that down to five. But uh, for most students, you know, at this lower level, six inches is just fine. Uh, we have, um, what else is needed for the setup here? We have a cup. So these small cups, you can go with a large one, but you just use these small cups. And, and to make it easier, what I do is I actually, I, I glue it to a three by five note card. And the reason being is kids start building uh, their different bridges to, to get this to sit on there a little bit nicer. If I put the note card on there, it's more likely to sit up so that we can then start putting pennies in. Okay, so making sure that we do that. So we've got a cup, and then I throw a small note card, glue it, hot glue this one on there. And then we need some pennies. And I would suggest having at least 200 pennies. So I'd, I'd make sure you've got, you know, four, five, six rolls of pennies that you could use when adding this in. So we've got that there. All right, so those are the materials that you'll need in order to run this activity. So think about that. How many groups are you going to have? Uh, usually I go groups of three students for this activity challenge. And again, uh, 10 cards for each. So those are all the materials you need. Setting this up, I just kind of showed you what I did with this. Uh, once I find that we've got six inches in between here, so measuring this out at six inches and six inches, <clears throat> I'll take a marker and I'll write on the insides, I'll put a little corner here, a little corner in the back because ultimately things are going to spill, the pennies are going to spill, the kids are going to bump these, they're going to be moved around. And it's once I've got these on there, I can say, okay, this one goes right here, this one goes right here, who's up next? And it's ready to go without having to measure each and every time. So that's a, a little trick that saves some time. What I have the students do when, before building their final bridge, is I like them to test different things and I give them ideas on what to test. Reason being, if I don't give them ideas, uh, a number of years back I, I ran this, they didn't give any ideas and we had some kids where they just fold, the, fold them in half and then throw some tape on there. They'd put this on there and their bridge, it, it did okay, but they really weren't problem solving. They weren't thinking about, you know, what's the best design. They simply fold it in half and tape. So what I like to do is I like to give them some ideas. And so some ideas that I give them is I say, you know, if we do accordion style, so folding back and forth lengthwise, 
you know, is, is that strong or not? And I tell them, you know, with your group, you can do that and then, you know, just push down on it a little bit with your hands. You can come over after you've tried something. Push down on it. Is it very strong? How about accordion style if you do it widthwise, like this right here? If you take this and uh, then you set this on there and you push down, is it very strong? You'll find that way it's not. What about if we do accordion style diagonally? Would that be very strong? You can bring that over, you can test that out, push on it. What about if you wanted to make a beam, maybe like a square, and set that on there, push down on it, see if there's any strength to it. How about if you want to go with a, you know, just a tube, a round tube going across here? Is that very strong? And then I use this one as an example for the, the kids to be thinking, and I say, well, keep in mind, this is how we're going to test this. I've got a cup, I've got a note card, and we're gonna put pennies inside. So if you do go with the round style, just one round like this, think about it, it's really, it's really tough for us to set this on here in a way that it's going to be able to be loaded with any pennies at all. So I tell the groups, think about that as you're designing things. Something else you can ask them to do is, you know, the accordion style. Not only that, but what about if we do accordion style really small versus accordion style, where did it go? really big is there a difference is is one way stronger than the other and so they've got eight cards to practice with to try things to figure out what design is strong and then tell them to save their two cards off to the side that they will together build work on they'll tape that one up and that's what we'll test okay so that right there would be the, the setup for getting this thing going. And I, I give them plenty of time to test things out over here. I even let them do some testing where they can put some pennies on some of their ideas. That way they'll see, you know, how they need to, to help keep it strong, you know, not only pulling it up and down, but not falling off sideways. All right, so that's the setup. Those are the materials. Finally, let's get into the science here. We could get into some advanced science here, but keeping this simple, really all I like to talk about is uh, gravity. Okay, gravity is going to pull things down towards the center of Earth. So once we get your bridge up here, once we get some pennies up here, that's being pulled straight down and we're trying to offset that force of gravity down. So you need to build a bridge that's strong enough to withstand the force of gravity down on this. Can you design and build a bridge that can do that? So that's about as deep as we go into the science here. So I know that my students enjoy this activity and I'm, I'm sure that yours will as well. Hi, I'm Josh, also known as Science Demo Guy. If you liked the video that you just saw and if you'd like to see more STEM activity challenges like this, along with the student worksheets that go with each activity, the materials that you would need to run this in your classroom, the grading rubrics and the teacher instructions, all of these as editable PDFs, which means if you wanted to, you could customize it for your specific classroom, then check out my website, sciencedemoguy.com forward slash store. What you'll find is that I sell these as individual products, and then I also sell them as packs at a discount. I have some very popular 16 packs, and I've just created a 36 pack, which I call STEM for the year. While you're there, be sure to check out the reviews that other teachers have left. We have hundreds of reviews from teachers that have loved incorporating these STEM activity challenges in their classroom, and maybe you will as well.